Here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's an every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am. I'm your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Friday with wide open telephones. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. And if you're not, you kick your ass the hell off the telephone. It's that simple. Just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Evan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Evan. What's going on, man? Just doing a radio show here, Evan. Yeah, right. I'm listening to it. Hey, I'm calling you because uh, I need I some love so. from you, man. Listen to this. You're always talking about people who, uh, who if they don't go to college, they ain't making that for themselves, right? Well, I say generally speaking, keep in mind, I did not graduate from college. All right. Well, because, see, I've never heard you say that in all the time. Well, then you're not listening because I've said it repeatedly. I've never claimed to be a college graduate ever. No, okay, no, right, but what I'm saying is I haven't heard you say generally or... or well, know, okay, because, because everything is... Gen- wait, wait, stop, stop. Don't be an idiot, okay? Everything I say is generally true. Generally. Yeah, say right, right. I everything, understand. everything. Do I have to assume that everybody's an idiot and continue to add all these modifiers to every single thing I say? Definitely Gen- not. I mean, come on. I, right, as, I, I as I always, I, I always, no, 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 no. I always use an analogy on this program. I say, I talk about the man who jumped out the 10 story window and lived. Okay. Does that mean everybody should jump out a 10 story window? <laughs> I don't know. Some people will probably benefit from it, huh? <laughs> no, uh, no, I really not. don't. I hear you. That's what I'm saying. Right. Just because uh, some people like me or maybe you make it through without a college education, that doesn't mean everybody should do it. And believe me, if I didn't have to do it, I would have done it another way. Right. Okay, well, I got a question for a lot. I mean, I was going to say that, uh, I mean, I'm making just about $90,000 a year welding, right? I'm 25 and I started doing this when I was 21. So, I mean, I'm making a great living. I'm loving what I'm doing. And uh, and I've also I got a wonderful wife and son, but hey, she's from another country, right? Colombian. There we go. There we go. But, yeah, but uh, my question for you, uh, I just I can't understand, uh, you know, how people are um, how people are, are not getting out there and trying, right? I mean, there's jobs everywhere. You hear, even with this whole big scare about a recession in the economy and whatnot, you know. I'm, I'm telling you, my brother's in a hard situation right now, and that guy goes out there, he's dumb as a doorknob, but he's able to get a job. I mean, a good-paying job. Starting, he can start at 15 bucks an hour. The vast, you know, by the way, up. the vast majority of people have jobs. The unemployment rate is 5%. Right, right, right. So you're talking about a very small number of people. Right, I understand that, but I, I guess it's, it's, it's obviously in the in, uh, mainstream media, it's blown up to be, uh, you know, a bigger uh, deal than what it really is. Now, what is, I mean, wait, wait, what is a bigger deal than what it really is? No, I'm, I'm saying that, that um, the media is blowing up the unemployment rate. No, actually, so, no, they, no, you're not, you're not reading. Uh, the media is talking, and the media are talking about, um, they're talking about uh, a recession, and we could or we could very well be about to have a recession or maybe not. We don't know, but they're talking about that. They are talking about the cost of a price of a gallon of gasoline, which yeah. write this down within the next two weeks will be four dollars a gallon here in Los Angeles. Hey, it's almost four dollars four dollars. It's gonna be a gallon over now, it's I'm going over people. it's going over four dollars a gallon. Oh definitely. I understand that. Uh, so so, so they're not they're not, not wait, wait. 
they're not exaggerating this stuff. Nobody has said the unemployment rate is going to be 15% or anything like that. But uh, spending is slowing down. Restaurants are closing. I was in Burbank the other day. I see the smokehouse went away. The restaurant's been there for, what, 50 years? Gone. Right. I saw Gaucho Grill, a uh, chain of uh, Argentinian uh, uh, restaurants. I don't know if the other ones are still around, but the one that was in West Hollywood, gone. Uh, 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 <coughs> Virgin Megastore. Uh, 8,000 Sunset Boulevard, gone. So what do you think, I mean, with the new presidential candidate coming up, what do you think is really going to be done about that? About, for example, you're talking about fuel. I mean, it's killing me. I mean, I'm driving 47,000 miles I drove last year, almost $1,000 a month in fuel. And here we are talking about, you know, universal health care for everybody. Why don't we deal with the real issue? Energy costs in this country are astronomical and ridiculous. Well, that's a question for them, not me. Well, right. But I mean, the bottom line is the problems, the problems with the economy are not exaggerated. No, I, I understand that. I'm not saying they are exaggerated. What I was saying was the media likes to focus on quite a bit of negative things. So, I mean, when's the last time you heard them talking about, hey, they would say the unemployment rate is only 5%. They would, no, they wouldn't say No, no, that. well, it's they not their say, job oh, saying it's only 5%. It's 5%. It's so high here, you know. The unemployment rate is going up. It is right, I understand that, but again, at five percent, just like you said, it's only and and foreclosures foreclosures are through the roof, and bankruptcies are going up. Right. I, I mean, come on, there are but all kinds of signs that the economy is suffering. No, I mean, I agree, and I think those are some of those people that would benefit from jumping out of that ten-story window you were talking about, right? People jumping in over the head when they... Well, uh, it, they, they, but you see, home. the point is, at, at a time like this, more than ever, people need to go to college. And by the way, Mr. Welder, uh, if the uh, economy slows down to the point where construction slows down, uh, new business activity slows down, uh, you're not going to be working so much either. And without, hey, a, and without a college degree... Uh, you, you know, you in your adult life, you haven't seen when the economy is bad. Do you know in 1979 the unemployment rate was 20 percent? No, I didn't. Do you know, know that? that in, I, do you know interest rates were o almost 20 percent? 20 percent. Right, I understand. You that. could and put your money. You could that. put your. No, you don't understand. Right now, you can't make 20 percent in the stock market. But in 1979, you could put your money in a money market account and make 16, 17 percent guaranteed. Right. That's because the economy was so bad. You haven't seen how bad it can get. You don't know. You, I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm young enough. Just 16 know, years ago, there. just 16 years ago, when, when the first George Bush was president, unemployment was over 7 percent. The stock market was languishing like it is today. So why, did it, why, why is it such a negative atmosphere inside the media? I mean, Again, you know, you, you, son, you just don't have any experience in this area, okay? You're, you know, sitting there making what you claim $90,000 a year as a welder. You haven't seen hard times. You're 25 years old. You haven't seen how it can be when things get worse. In your adult life, you've never seen it. I agree with that. I and, understand. And you are speaking out of ignorance. Okay, well, but what I don't Ignorance. Right? You awfully cocky. You are awfully cocky for somebody who's been an adult for seven years. I you that. haven't seen what it would be like for a welder if they stop building new buildings. Well, you tell me how often has that happened? You think of the stock 1975, 1976, 1978, 1979, uh, 1990, 1991. Pal, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Why don't you just sit at home for a year and wait for the economy to get better and see how your personal economic situation is? No, but wait, see what what I'm. You saying have is, no is, idea. Welder, you know, I, I have work. I will always have. No, work you will not. No, you will not. No, well, you will yeah, not. I'm telling you right now. You are wrong. I know about. You that. are wrong, and even if you have work, you'll have to take less money for it if the economy collapses. Jobs yeah. like yours are the first to suffer. I'm telling you, there's no way. All right. Fine. You're an expert. No. Nope. That's enough. Find out the hard way. There'll always be work. Sure there will. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, oh, boy. 
Right, right. Welders will always make $90,000 a year no matter what happens to the economy. Yep, if we have a 15% unemployment rate and there's guys willing to take 20000 a year to be welders, companies won't hire them instead, right? Okay. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Frank on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, hi, Tom Likas. Um, first time caller, long time listener. Um, I had a quick question. Well, before anything, I'd like to say that I've, I've been listening to you for about a year now, and I really agree with everything you say. It, it makes sense. You know, it does. It really does. But um, here's my question, sir. Um, I dealt my, well, actually, my girlfriend left back in November. She came from a broken home. She does a lot of drugs. Um, she stepped on with a, a lot of guys. And just yesterday, I actually called her up um, just to check up on her and see how she's been, you know, how she's doing. And she told me that, well, she's popping ecstasy up to four pills at a rave every week. And, you know, I I actually, I do care about her, and I don't even know what to tell her anymore. Why, you know? why do you care? Uh, I guess, I don't know, I'm a wuss, you could say. I, I yeah, well, I, I'm already thinking, and I might as well say it, you're beyond a wuss. Uh, yeah. You could say I don't know. I just care about people. I care more more about other people than I care about myself, which is kind of stupid. That is stupid. I spoke with my cousin and a good friend of mine today, and I got two different um, responses. One of my good friends who goes to school with me said that um, I, it's, it's it's good that I care about her and all, but I have to let go. And if she can't help herself, but I can't help her out either. My other cousin, who been listening to for for about a year or so too, told me that I'm a wuss and. I should just go and and I know, agree with them. So her. so what's your, what so what do you want to hear from me now? I mean, well, well first of all, I mean, what are the the consequences from popping four pills of X? I'm not a doctor. Oh, I see. All right. Well, what would you do in my position, sir? I would stop calling that person. Really? Yes. Yeah. Uh, She's an ex. Yeah, I know. You're, you are right, though. I mean, damn, I. I don't want to worry about her so much. It's not your problem. You didn't cause it. It's not your problem. I guess so. Uh, not, not. I guess so. Did you put the pills in her mouth? I didn't. Did you take her to the raves she's been going to? Nope, not at all. Right. So who's responsible? It's her. Her and her, her right. druggy friend that she hangs out with. Right. And why do you feel the need to be uh, Captain save -a Why do you need to... Uh, to rescue drug addicts. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, I don't is your I... life is your life so perfect that you could afford to spend your time rescuing other people? It's not, man. I have a messed up life myself. I mean, I don't, I'm not in drugs enough. So why don't you fix your own goddamn life? I do. No, no. Fix it, and then worry about other people once it's fixed. Uh, all right, Tom. Well, I mean, I guess that was my question pretty much. And, yeah, you're right. I am. I'm going to have to let go. Forget about it. Fix your own life. Right. All right, Tom. I mean, that's pretty much it, then. I you're you're it. disappointed. You wanted me to tell you, oh, yeah, this is great. Go right over there. You That's what you wanted, isn't it? No, I, I mean, I know what you were going to say pretty much. I just wanted to hear your, your perspective on it. An X is an X. Right. For reason. I, I, I'm just like, if, if, if I were to find out she died of, of an overdose, then it would really hurt. Oh, Why? Sorry. Not your fault. Uh, She's effed in the head. She's effed up. That's true. Her mom passed away back in 05. Her family doesn't really care about her. Well, they're all, all gangbangers. I've, I'm, I've got the violin out right now. All right. Tell us the story. Pretty much, I'll pass the weird. Her dad's never there. Her brothers are on gang. She's just living. She's in a world of crap right now. Where is she living? In Duarte, California. Is she living in an apartment? Does she have her own place? Dad's um retired though, and they're, they're like barely making ends meet right now. And her gang brother, her gang. Uh, she's working at McDonald's right now. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> and so, what what are you supposed to do for her? Huh? Well, what could you even do for somebody like that? Exactly. When I was with her, I tried to talk to that That's that, that lifestyle, but when she left me, I, I guess she, she gave in, you know. 
she wasn't used to the help that I was giving her, and she gave him back to her old life. Uh, she's it's not your job to be dragging people out of the gutter. That's what everybody tells me. It's not my job. Let her help herself out. And if she can, well, then she screwed up, you know? That's right. All right. I, I, I admit, too, dude, I, I guess I am a wuss, huh? Why can't you fix your own life? Uh, you're right. And I, I, I can't, I take care of my own problems, you know? I don't rely on anybody else. You haven't fixed them yet. Right. Well, that is one of my problems, actually, con being concerned too much. How about fixing your own life first? Uh, we'll do your right. I will. All right. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I want to talk first about the 167 pound nine. I don't buy that for a minute. No, I don't either. I think you've got to be druggly. You gotta be drunk and ugly to get her later on in the <laughs> <Drugly>. evening. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1 free FM. SoCal's FM Chalk Station. It's the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephone to 1 800 500 Tom. Oh, we got a call from somebody at the smokehouse. Apparently they're still in business. Which is strange because I've heard from more than one person that it was out of business. I drove past it. And they had all these signs all over it that looked like they were advertising some other business. So I don't know what happened. Aaron, what, what did you find out about the Smokehouse in Burbank, which is one of the oldest restaurants in Southern California? Well, Tom, I found out it's still open. You had me so concerned. Well, I was concerned, too. I love the Smokehouse. I do, too. I can't not eat their cheese bread. I will be honest with you. I was driving back home on Saturday from Costco in Burbank. I do know where that is. And I drove past the smokehouse on Olive. Yes. And there were signs all over it. It looked like it had changed into some other business. Well, I'm happy to inform you that it's not. Good. It's open. I just called there to make sure because I was so devastated when I heard that. And they're open. I'm thrilled. Nobody's happier than I am to hear the smokehouse is open. It is officially open, and I hope they're listening, too, because they were really upset, too. Uh, well, no one's more upset than I Well, maybe they're more upset than I am, but I, I was upset. When I drove by on Saturday, I was upset. Well, I'm happy that it's open, so we can go there and have cocktails and bread, so we're good. Cocktails and cheese bread. That's the best combo. There you get you know, a couple of martinis. By the way, Smokehouse, late afternoon, after all the people go back to Warner Brothers to work. Exactly. You have the whole place to yourself? I will be there. You get a basket of cheese bread, a couple of martinis. Sounds wonderful. Then I can pound you in one of the back booths over there because you know it's kind of empty. Uh, that might be kind of fun. Might be? Might be. How do you know I haven't done it? Oh, I am sure you have. <laughs> How do you know I wouldn't do it again? Huh? How do you know I wouldn't do it again? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure you would. Well, you might you have to find out. Like this, aren't you? I am. There you go. Mm-hmm. Well, wonderful. I'm glad to tell you that it's open. Sounds, Sounds good, Aaron. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> They're coming in left and right when it rains and pours. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's going on, man? This is a first-time listener, long-time, uh, you know, call, first-time caller. Sorry, a little nervous. Uh, anyways, real quick, I want to let you know. Um, I just got a, uh, or I just called my wife. Usually, I call her around this time every day on my break. Uh, I'm at work. I work in Irvine. Um, I give her a call every day around this time just to say hi, you know, and all that. So today, I called her. First thing she said, child services or social services has your kid. You know, and I said, why? What's going on? And she was. I mean, my little girl. She's three years old. She was in school today. Um, I don't know what happened, how it happened, but. All of a sudden, she just said, Daddy touches me. And I said, what? I said, this has to be a joke. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I have no idea why she said that. I mean, she has no reason to. I mean, I don't even give her baths. Her mom gives her baths. And I'm freaking out. Like, I'm totally, like, shaking. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. She told them that, I mean, I smoke pot. Yeah, I smoke pot. So what? That doesn't mean I'm going to go out and rape a little girl or even mine. If, you know, bottom line, I'm not going to do anything to my little girl. She's my baby. Oh, wait a minute. You smoke pot in front of your little girl? 
No, no, I don't. No, I don't. So she doesn't know that you smoke pot? No, she doesn't. No, not at all. I don't, you know, I'm not one of those parents that goes around, you know, with a blunt walking around the house. No, not at all. I do it privately, you know. I, I'll go out for a drive. I'll come back home and everything will be fine. You know, I yeah. mean, do what I got to do. When I it's not going to be fine you know? tonight, Alex. What's that? It's not going to be fine tonight. But I know, like right now, she told me child service is over there right now taking pictures of the house. You got 34 minutes to find an attorney, son. 34 minutes. Yeah, because the business day here in L.A. will be over in 34 minutes. But I mean, oh my God, I mean, I'm so, I'm just so nervous. I don't know, I mean. I'm, I, t I'm trying to bail you out here, at least to the extent that this is the first thing you need to do. Right. Right, definitely. Um, another thing too that was kind of, kind of weird. I mean, I have another little girl. My, I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old. They, uh, they checked my one-year-old. You know, they went down, you know, and, and physically checked her, and she was fine. You know, of course. You know, why wouldn't she be? Um, my second one, they were in the process of doing that. They were walking around the house that I stay in. They were taking pictures, this and that. You know, and I said, well, that really I don't care about, but. I mean, if they're going to check my little girl, they're going to check her, but I have nothing to worry about. But I am. I'm worried because they're there now at my house. Who uh, let them in to search your house? I have no idea. Like, my wife was, she was, she was watching the people, the child services people doing their thing. She wasn't really concentrating on, on the details. You know, she, I don't know if, she, she, my little girl, my three-year-old, she goes to a private school, uh, the Crystal Cathedral, private school. Um, and I don't know what kind of policies and procedures they have if she says something like that. You know, well, that's the thing. She's in a private school, and I don't know if, if you know, that, that school would say something like that to, um, you know, to whoever they report it to. Well, of course, your wife believes you're innocent, right? It, she better. What do you mean she better? She better believe me. because I'm Well, how did it sound on the phone when you talked to her? She didn't sound sure at all, to she, say the truth. She totally, like, didn't sound like she was 100%, you know, um, on my side. And I was like, whatever, you know, just fine, hang up. She told me to call her brother. I called her brother. He doesn't answer his phone. But she told me, she's like, you know what, I can't talk to you right now. I'm watching them doing their thing. They're taking pictures. They're going to go ahead and check her physically, too, to see if, if, if she's been, you know, if her cherry was popped, then, of course, they're going to look at me. You know, and that's something that I don't want them to do because I didn't do anything. You know, I mean, she's well, my baby. You, uh, are you going to cheap out like most guys who call in with calls like this and not hire an attorney? No, nah, I mean, I'll do what I got to do if that's what I got to do. No, but you got to do it like now. Do you got a number? Uh, no, I don't do legal references on the air. Don't you have an attorney for other purposes? Um, I haven't been. In the legal system in years, I, I don't even, I wouldn't know the first. What, do you have a criminal record? It's for possession, misdemeanor, nothing major. Okay, but you had an attorney. I did. Well, why don't you start with figuring out who the name of that person was and calling him? Okay. You have yeah, no was... time to waste. Do you use other professionals like accountants? Um, I don't have an accountant. Do you have a doctor? Yes. Can he refer you to an attorney? Yes, very possible. Well, you need to get on the phone and start doing this, and it's an emergency, because I'm not kidding. It's 4.30, they're at your house now, and the uh, office is going to close for the weekend. Right. I'm off. Okay, yeah, so because I'm at work right now, I would have to, I would have to tame. I would say this is an emergency, Alex. Okay, yeah, definitely it is. Absolutely it is. Yeah, okay, so I'll I'll just go ahead and leave work right now to... To do what I got to do is get an attorney. Involved. You got to get an attorney. Okay. You may not be to work on Monday. Right. Right. And that, I mean, as long as I let my, my company know where I'm at, what's going on, they'll be fine with it. I mean, I'll have my job. Um, man, it, this is really scary. I mean, I'm, I'm totally shaking right now. Like, she told them that I smoke pot. I mean... What is that gonna What is that gonna do? I mean, what I, your I mean, wife told them you smoke pot? Yeah, because they asked her all kinds of questions about me. You know, so your wife let, let's what review your wife, who sounds like Albert Einstein. She lets these strangers into the house without a search warrant, 
and then starts asking, answering personal questions about you. Right. Very supportive. Yeah. I, I have a feeling she may not believe you, Alex. She's she's just freaking out herself too. You know. I mean, I, I don't, don't care true. if someone doesn't have a search warrant. They don't come into my home. It's that simple. Right. Yeah. That that's a good point. Definitely a good point there. Because once they're in your home, where's your pot? Right. Exactly. I don't I don't leave it in the house because that's what that was another thing she told me. She said if we find anything in your room, anything illegal, we're gonna arrest him. And it's like, okay, I mean, whoa, where did that come from? You know, I mean, how do you guys? Yeah. Uh, well, do you have a pipe or any other paraphernalia? A bong? In my car, I do. In your car? Right. Good work, Ace. But I mean, that's, I mean, I could ditch that. No problem. Whatever. That's, I'll Pal, do what I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you to hire an attorney immediately. Okay. Do not go home without an attorney. Do you hear me? Definitely. So what can, would the attorney be able to contact me, like, on my cell phone? And You're going to tell them you know? that you are involved in a criminal investigation and you need an attorney now. It's an emergency. This yeah. is an emergency. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, I don't want to go down for something I didn't do. You know, definitely not. And if I got to pay, you know, an attorney to, to help me out, then definitely, you know, I'll do what I got to do. Yes, but. you do. All right, Tom. <clears throat> Thanks, man. Uh, man, I'm just really nervous. I mean, I'm freaking out. You know, I can't stop shaking. I, it's it's ridiculous. How, I mean, well, by the way, let's review for the uh, listeners out there. How old were you when you got married? Uh, about 21. How's that working out? Um, it's it's all right. I mean, my job. Your is wife is throwing you under the bus. Well, yeah, for the most part. When it comes really, when it comes down to it, it sounds like she is. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is why I tell the boys not to get married at 21. Yeah, because then this kind of stuff happens. And have kids. Right. Right. And right, clearly, well, clearly your wife objects to your pot smoking, too, right? Well, she does, but... I why mean, would you marry somebody who objects to your pot smoking? What's that? Why would you marry someone... Oh, well, objects to your pot smoking. She actually knew about it. Like, right before, when we were dating, she knew. You know, she knew I smoked like a chimney. Did no, she, she object to it? No. So she waited until you married her. Right. You know, and, and after, you know, doing it and just, I kept doing it, I kept doing it. She just finally said, you know what? I'm not going to be able to change him. So why even try? You know, she just talked smack about it. But she, I'm, I mean, she says she won't be able to change me. She won't. You know, because, I mean, I'm doing what I got to do. You know, I'm working. I'm, you know, I'm not even cheating on her, you know, nothing. I'm, I'm doing what I have to do. I'm being a parent. Right after work, I go straight home. I'm, I'm being responsible. You know, I'm doing what I got to do. I pay my bills and all that. And then, you know, for, for smoking a little pot, she's going to flip her lid. Fine, let her flip her lid. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing it. I mean, why? Now that's my point of view. Well, I mean, I know well, because now when you get into these sticky situations, she's going to throw you under the bus. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that's that's something I can hate. You know, I can hate her for later. But right now, it's like I'm, I'm going to smoke pot. Yeah, I know it's illegal. If I get pulled over, whatever. I've been through it. You know, I've done my Prop Thirty Six. I've done that kind of thing. And you know, whatever. I've I've been through it all. You know, it doesn't mean I I wouldn't be able to do it again. Hold on a second, Alex. Mike, what did you want to say to Alex here? Hey, Alex, exact same thing happened to me. Do you have your medical recommendation? My medical recommendation? A, a doctor's medical recommendation to grow, cultivate, possess, consume? Yeah, from way back, like 10 years back when I was in uh, junior high. That doesn't yeah. count then. That doesn't count. What you need to do is you need to go see a doctor and have medical recommendation for whatever ailment you are suffering from, and you need to go there first before going home. Because without that medical recommendation, you're breaking the law. But here's the here's the the, the really bad thing is that she's also breaking the law. If she was in living in the house while you were cultivating, she is guilty of exactly the same thing that you're guilty of, which means your kids are going to the state. For at least a temporary weekend, I mean, Friday is a bad day for this to be happening. You're not going to see your kids till Monday at least. 
house. Now, if you got your doctor's recommendation, they're in your house without a warrant. The only reason they're allowed to be there is because she said that they're you're, they're allowed to be there. And you, and in that case, you got to make sure she, if she signs anything. Is there are there plants growing there now? Yeah, there's. I don't know what's going on right now. I mean, she told me that they're there. They're taking. No, he pictures. asked you if you're growing pot plants. Plant? No, no, no. I don't grow any of that. No. So he doesn't oh, grow so pot. All you, so all you have is uh, is smokable product. Right. Right. On okay. myself. On my. Okay. Do you have? Do you, listen. Listen. Do you have less than eight ounces? Oh yeah. Not okay. even that. Yeah. Okay. Then you're fine. Do you have less than an ounce? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, then, yeah. then it's just a possession ticket. It's not. It's not a distribution ticket. You're fine, dude. Here's the. Here's the thing. Well, the we don't know he's fine until he talks to an attorney. All right. We don't know. What, okay. I, okay. He's not fine. He's, you're right. He should talk to an attorney. But you should. When you have kids involved, and you got any time a woman is involved, okay, how volatile they are. You've got to protect yourself. It's 125 to 150 dollars for a six month doctor's recommendation. Uh, the California state law states that if one licensed physician can make a recommendation or a diag or a, um, or a prescription off of another licensed physician's diagnosis, so what you do is you sign a medical release form, you fax it over to your family physician. You've got anxiety, you got stress, you got back pains, you got asthma, whatever it is. They will fax over your your, your medical records to the cannabis therapy friendly doctor. He will write you a recommendation with his stamp right down the spot. Um, and then you will be uh, covered for uh, any kind of possession ticket. Get, let them give you the ticket. You go to court, it'll get thrown right out. Three out of the five Supreme Court. Uh, all, right, all right, but you're not an attorney, and I think he needs to talk to an attorney right now, uh, no, not somebody who's uh, a layman, just a, uh, just a big weed smoker. Uh, Claire, what do you want to say to Alex? Yeah, Alex, you have much more to worry about than the pot. If you have been reported for child abuse, um, that a major, major problem. As a teacher myself, we are state mandate reporters, which means if we have any indi indication, sorry, indication that there has been child abuse, sexual, or any child abuse, we have to report it by state law. The only way that a teacher would know that is whether there is physical evidence, the child has reported something, or somebody has reported it. So somebody has reported on you that there has been some abuse to your child. Now, whether it be your child itself or your wife or somebody else, there has been some sort of report on you. And you better get down and get an attorney immediately because this will ruin your life. Whether you're even found innocent the going through the whole process of the court, because I've been there, <laughs> I've done that. I've been a teacher, I, I mean, I am a teacher, and I have had to report, and even though people have been found to be innocent, your case is public. I mean, it is devastating oh, yeah. for everybody involved, and you got to do what Tom says and get a lawyer immediately. Yeah, immediately. That's, what I was, that's exactly what I was thinking. Even if I get over this thing, even if I'm proven innocent, it's still going to be embarrassing. You know, and of course, yeah, I thought about that, and like that's why I'm so freaking out right now. It's like, what? I've uh, got to watch your mouth We're on the air there, Dan. Uh, Alex. Sorry. Sorry Please, I know you're in trouble, but you got to watch your mouth. Now I have an actual attorney on the line here. Uh, okay. Uh, this is Daniel. Daniel, what did you want to say to Alex? Yeah, hi, Alex. Uh, my name is Daniel Perlman. Alex, you need to not be talking about this on the air. I know it's entertaining for everybody, and, and I understand you're looking for help. You need to speak to an attorney. I'm happy to talk to you. Uh, you can find someone else, but uh, you, you need to stop making this public, and you need to start taking care of it with an attorney like Tom's telling you. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, you know, I'll be glad to take any number at this point, you know, because I, I'm... I'm too shaken up by not to be even, you know, start looking for for anybody, you know? Right. Well, can I, uh, Tom, uh, I'll tell you what, I will. Yeah, no, 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 I'll tell you what, we'll take you both off the air, and uh, Daniel will give Alex your phone number and we'll hook you guys up. All right. Thank you. All right. Wow. <laughs> Tom Likas. one 800 5800 Tom Tom Likas. Like Do you keep the guys no foreplay? Well, put it this way. I tell the guys, your main concern is getting what you came for. Oh, my goodness, Tom. This is horrible. This is not romantic. It's the Tom Likas Show.
97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. Puts out like a show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. With wide open telephones at 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I think it's great. I just saw on Fox they have uh, advertised their Rite Aid selling those DNA testings for the guys. All they got to do is swab the kid and swab themselves and say, bitch, I don't owe you anything. I, I love that. <laughs> I just wonder uh, how many times they got to test it to be valid. I mean, hey, they, you know, they can take the evidence. And, you know, Anybody can take the evidence to court and say, hey, it was tampered with. I mean, how do you cover yourself with this? I mean, you still have to end up going to court and proving it anyway. No, 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 no. But they, this is step one. I mean, it's just like when a woman goes to uh, Ralph's and picks up an EPT. Yeah. And then she, uh, you know. She, oh, Lord, she takes the it. stick to the bathroom and comes out to see if it's pink or blue. I mean, that's just a start. You then go to the doctor. And you got to have a pregnancy test, ultrasound, who knows what. Uh, the bottom line is it's a start. There's a lot of guys out there who think their kid is theirs. Yeah. And maybe they wouldn't go to the trouble of uh, going to the doctor and waiting for the lab results and all of that. So uh, an in-the-drugstore DNA test is one way to at least uh, get your mind going. Now, yeah, maybe you could always have someone do it for you. You never know. Yeah. I mean, the woman might not let you get close enough to the kid to do it. They'll keep watching you, whatever you do. And you got to have someone do it for you covertly. Well, maybe so. But uh, I think the guys, I think every man out there should have his DNA tested to see if that kid is his. Every man out there. And I think a lot of you will be surprised. Up to 30% of you will be surprised. Kelly on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing today? Great. Hey, I, a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned John McCain in a conversation and said he was a kook, and you based that on personal opinion. Not personal opinion, personal experience. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're right, personal experience. I was just wondering, would you mind reiterating on that? I, I know politics are kind of personal usually, but... Well, I told the story on the air, and I'll repeat it. Um, sure. I was working at a radio station in Phoenix, where at the time, uh, John McCain was a local congressman. And I invited, uh, as I have with many other local politicians, I invited John McCain to be a guest on my radio program and was uh, told that uh, John isn't doing radio. And then the next week I heard him on a competing radio station. So uh, when I tried to find out what had happened, I essentially got blown off. So I went on the air and said that John McCain was a liar, that... He and his people said that he doesn't do radio, but he went on and he uh, appeared on another radio station. Liar. He's a liar. Mm -hmm. uh, John McCain personally, personally called the owner of the radio station I worked for and tried to get me fired. And he was a liar, let me tell you. I'm waiting for your reaction. No, it's, it, it makes sense to me, the Keating 5 uh, connection. And I, I, I just don't see how I could vote in a person that was a POW in, in, you know, encamped or in prison for years against his will. Well, if for me, it's, it's one thing. It's one thing for saying, oh, all politicians are liars or something like that. Hmm. This guy lied to me personally. All right. Then tried to get me fired for saying so. Just the way he tried to call the New York Times and tried to get them not to run that story a couple of weeks ago. Well. That's how he operates. I... I'll never support him for anything. Ever. Our email address, Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.